Once again, good morning. My name is Don McCoy, and I'm the president of the Fulcher Katy Area Chamber of Commerce. And it's my honor for, I guess, about the eighth year in a row that we've taken over and done this ceremony on a yearly basis. And it's always been a, a terrific turnout and a full house. And we appreciate everybody getting here today, taking time out of what is normally a holiday to come and uh, pay our respects to our fallen heroes. So thank you all for being here. Uh, it's important that uh, at this time we all rise and remove your hats uh, for the presentation of our colors by the Troop 106 Boy Scouts of America and Troop 941 of Boy Scouts of America. Gentlemen, Honor Guard. Boy Scouts, I understand this was your first time doing the Honor Guard, and I appreciate you stepping up and adapting and overcoming, and it was a tremendous presentation of our colors. Thank you very much to Troop 106 and 941. Well done. Well done. Well, kind of like in church, we're going to ask you to rise once again, <laughs> because we are going to uh, have the singing of our national anthem by the world-renowned, I like to call them. Katie Vocal Express. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight So much ladies that was absolutely fantastic and we'll be hearing from them again later please have a seat thank you so much <clears throat> all right I want to ask you we're ready to start with our invocation so if you don't mind I'd like to introduce Reverend Charles Abernathy from the Fulcher Church of Christ Reverend let's all bow our heads please Father, we are grateful to have you shine your face on our part of 
the world. We're grateful for our city. We're thankful for the men and women who serve uh, us and our city who make this a better place to be. We're grateful for their sacrifice and their service. Father, we ask your blessings to be on our civil servants who uh, serve uh, selflessly and, and sacrificially. We're grateful for uh, them keeping our city safe. We're asking, Father, for your blessings on the families of those who also have uh, lost loved ones in service uh, to our city, to our country. Uh, Father, we ask that you would bless our armed forces. We know that we have a lot of people on foreign soil who are serving, protecting the freedoms of others. Uh, Father, we're asking your blessings to shine down on them. We know, Father, we have a lot of people who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom in this country. And Father, we're thankful, and most importantly to you, for blessing us with that freedom, but we're thankful for the men and women uh, who gave their lives so that we can enjoy what we have here today. Father, we are mindful of their families. We're mindful of the sacrifice that their families have given for us and for this country. Uh, Father, we recognize there are a lot of people in the world who long for what we have and our freedom here. We know that there are people right now fighting for their freedom in other parts of the world, and we ask your face to shine upon them as well. But again, Father, for our beautiful city, for our servants here, for uh, just the blessing and way of life that we enjoy and experience, we, we praise you for what we have and for what you have given. We know that every good gift comes from you, and for that we're grateful. Again, Father, we ask that your face would shine down upon us, continue to shine on those who serve our country and the armed forces. Help us to be a grateful people, Father, who appreciate those men and women who have uh, sacrificed their lives, their families, their all for us. It's in the name of your Son, the greatest servant and, sacri and, and one who gave his life as a sacrifice. We ask it in his name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Appreciate that. Before we get to our mayoral greetings, we'd like to recognize some distinguished guests in our audience. Uh, first, we'd also like to recognize those that are retired or current military. Uh, Mr. Ron Duncan, retired Army Reserve. Thank you for being here. Nancy. Thank you. Nancy France. Nancy, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Debbie Harmon Culp, daughter of Fred Harmon, 22 and a half year Air Force veteran. Thank you very much. Um, I'll try this. Wobe, uh, man, Wobin. Did, did I get that right? Okay. Bill Heady. I love Bill. Bill's a great friend of ours. Eight years U.S. Army, Vietnam vet. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Paul Smith, two years Army. Paul, thank you. <laughs> Sergeant James Goolsby, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Clayton O'Connor, United States Marine Corps. Thank you. <laughs> Lorenzo, uh, can't read the first name, U.S. Army. Uh, thank you, there you are, sir. <laughs> ah, Sergeant. William Henry, Bill, our Fulcher Police Sergeant, United States Navy. Thank you, Bill. Uh, right, uh, James Wright, Yolanda, U.S. Army. Th they're both of you. Thank you very much. Casey, Casey Car uh, Garlow, Garlo, is that? U.S. Coast Guard, retired. Thank you, sir. Tana Poe, United States Navy Reserve. Thank you. Selby Slater, Army, U.S. Army. Oh, okay. Sorry, Salter, I know you, buddy. Buddy, this is my this is my brother's in-laws. I ought to know. We're going to have a writing class soon, okay? <laughs> but thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, and Sarah Johnson, Royal Australian Air Force. And C.J. McDaniel, United States Air Force. Very much. And if there is anybody I missed, would you please rise and announce your name? Donna, thank you. Oh, Kent Poole, U.S. Army. What's that? Kent Poole, U.S. Army. Kent Poole, U.S. Army. Thank you, Kent. 
and then we'll all meet after this for a writing class. <laughs> okay, now on to, uh, uh, all of you could be doctors though, I, you know. <laughs> but we also have some uh, distinguished elected officials with us today. I want to recognize uh, uh, Ms. Kate Collick, Fulcher City Council, and she also helped organize this event, so thank you. For She's the chair of this event. Thank you, Kay, for putting on such a wonderful presentation today. Commissioner Vincent Morales, Precinct 1, Fort Bend County. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. <laughs> Ms. Tricia Krennic, Justice of the Peace elect, Precinct 1, Place 2. There she is, back there. Ms. Deborah Cates, Council Member, City Fosher. Ms. Deborah, thank you. <laughs> Mayor Lori Boudreau of City of Sampton, Mayor, thank you. Mayor Aaron Groff, Mayor Fulcher, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Judge Kelly Crow, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 1, Place 1, thank you. <laughs> Ken Poole, once again, uh, Fulcher City Council, thank you, Ken. <laughs> Newly elected Jason Knapp with Fulcher City Council, Knapp. thank you, Jason, good to see you. <laughs> Lisa Kettler Martin, Fulcher City Council, thank you. Jeff Martin, Fort Bend Mud, 172, thank you. And last but certainly not least, Sarah Johnson, once again, City Council of Fulcher. Thank you. Bob Wall. Bob who? No, Wall. Excuse me. I know who Bob is. Bob, I don't know. You didn't sign in, sir, so therefore, I think there's a recall. No, I'm just the mayor of Simon, the mayor of Western Lakes, uh, Bob Wall. <laughs> I'm just glad we're friends. <laughs> well, used to be, yeah. Um, but folks, I just want to say it's it's a pleasure to be here once again. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of people behind the scenes put this on and do a lot of hard work uh, putting this together. It may seem very simple. We just show up at our community center and and do what we do. But uh, again, uh, Kay Colick and her team of of of. Uh, uh, volunteers got together and, and arranged and organized this whole thing but mostly I want to recognize also the, the Fulcher Simonton Lions Club they're all in their yellow vest back there thank you ladies and gentlemen for your hard work on this the Brazos River Rotary Club fantastic thank you guys the uh, Texian Exchange Club thank you also want to thank uh, uh, the Fulcher Katie Area Chamber. They, that's, thank you very much. Uh, the, the city of Fulcher for letting us have the facility. Uh, Wallace Bank, providing our water outside. It's going to be a hot day. Take one. Weikert Realtors and Murray Group, thank you very much. Fulcher Floral Design, fantastic. The David Dow Group. And a special thanks to all the program participants. Kay, you want to mention some of your uh, volunteers, please, if you don't mind, have them stand up. There they are. Thank you, Henry. Fantastic. Like I said, once again, this doesn't go off with a lot of people giving their time, their valuable time, to come and put all this together. So, uh, but I, I, I tell you, Memorial Day, sometimes I, I kind of get a little bit on my social media and I, I put things out there that, you know, it's Memorial Day, it's not barbecue day and all this sort of thing. And, you know, I kind of thought about it today. You know, having a having day off and being able to, to celebrate with your family and get together and have a barbecue and do things like that is exactly why the men and women of our country sacrificed it all so that we could do that. So uh, maybe just another way of thinking about it, a little more perspective. So let's get right to our program. And first off, we'd like to introduce the Honorable Aaron Groff, Mayor Fulcher, to come up with his proclamation, please. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, it's always an honor um, to be here on a day of remembrance in which we honor those who have served and made the ultimate sacrifice. Words fell me. Um, I can never find the words to express 
my gratitude for those who donned the uniform, those men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice. With that, I will read a proclamation on behalf of the city of Fulcher. Whereas Memorial Day each year serves as a solemn reminder of the scourge of war and its bitter aftermath of sorrow, and whereas this day has traditionally been devoted to the paying of homage to loved ones who lie in hallowed graves throughout the land, having sacrificed their lives that war might end, and whereas in tribute to these silent dead, it is fitting that we lift up our voices together in supplication to an almighty God for wisdom in our search for enduring peace. And whereas the Congress in a joint resolution approved May 11th, 1950, provided the Memorial Day should be set aside as a day of prayer for permanent peace. And whereas today and every day, let us remember the servicemen and the women we have lost and let us honor them by rededicating ourselves to strengthening our nation's promise. With love, grace, and reflection, let us honor our fallen fellow Americans, unknown and known, who sacrificed their freedom to ensure our own. Now, therefore, I, Aaron Groff, Mayor of the City of Fulcher, do hereby proclaim Memorial Day, Monday, May 30th, 2022, as a day of citywide prayer for permanent peace. In commemoration of this event, I urge all citizens to join together in their homes, place of work, place of worship, to pray for a permanent peace and to continue to pray for our city, our state, and our nation. Proclaim this 30th day of May 2022. Thank you, Mayor. And now the Honorable Lori Boudreau, Mayor of Simonton. Mayor. Thank you, Don. Uh, we were joking a little while ago about that our proclamations would sound almost exactly alike, and they will. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of reading the entire pro proclamation, I'll get to that in a second, but I just wanted to share that I spent the first part of this weekend at another event. It's been moved from Fort Bend County to Decatur, but it's called the Danny Dietz Memorial Classic, and it commemorates the lives of all of the sacrifices made during Operation Red Wing. And the people that attend, by and large, are donors that are aware and interested. People come from Fort Worth, Dallas, all over. But it is filled with families that are in the roping community, barrel racing, all sorts of rodeo events. Kids, little tiny two-year-olds that are running around with their cute little cowboy boots on to parents that are there and teaching this way of life and this respectful attitude and um, gratefulness and grace to their families. It is very rewarding and the reason that I share that with you is it's a room full of the same sort of people that are here today and it certainly makes it easier when you think times are hard or maybe people don't have the same beliefs that they used to to be around those that are like-minded and that are certainly grateful for the sacrifices that have given us all this freedom. So I'm grateful and blessed to be here with you all today and I'll give you my proclamation from the city of Simonton. Whereas Memorial Day each year serves as a solemn reminder of the scourge of war and its bitter aftermath of sorrow, and whereas this day has traditionally been devoted to paying homage to loved ones who lie in hallowed graves throughout the land, having sacrificed their lives that war might end, and whereas in tribute to these silent dead, it's fitting that we lift up our voices together in supplication to Almighty God for wisdom in our search for enduring peace, and whereas Congress a joint resolution approved May 11, 1950, provided that Memorial Day should be set aside as a day of prayer for permanent peace. And whereas today and every day, let us remember the servicemen and women we have lost, and let us honor them by redirecting ourselves to strengthening our nation's promise. With love, grace, and reflection, let us honor our fallen fellow Americans, known and unknown, who sacrificed their freedom to ensure our own. Now, therefore, I, Laurie Boudreau, Mayor of the City of Simonton, do hereby proclaim Memorial Day, Monday, May 30th, 2022, as a day of citywide prayer for permanent peace. In commemoration of this event, I urge all citizens to join together in their homes, places of work, and places of worship to pray for the permanent peace and continue to pray for our city, our state, and our nation. Proclaim this 30th day of May, 2022. Thank you so much, Mayor Boudreaux. That was very inspiring. I appreciate that. And now, uh, Mayor of Weston Lakes, Honorable Bob Wall.
Thanks, Don. This is my first Memorial Day uh, as Mayor of Weston Lakes, and uh, really proud to be here, be able to share this with you. Uh, this weekend means a lot to me. Uh, my hometown of Indianapolis uh, yesterday held the 106th running of the greatest spectacle in racing. And uh, despite all the, the, the fanfare that goes along with the race itself, my favorite part is when over 300,000 people have a collective chill during the flyover and a collective tear in their eye during playing in taps. I'm really proud to represent the 4,500 people that live in Western Lakes and uh, those of you that are residents of Western Lakes, I'd like you to stand and join me as I read this. There's more of us than you think. <laughs> <laughs> the City of Western Lakes is proud to participate in this Memorial Day ceremony. May 30th, 2022, in the city of Fulcher, Texas, to honor the brave men and women who have served and died in service to the nation. And whereas this day has been set aside by the nation to take time to reflect, remember, and give thanks for the sacrifices of the millions who have served and died to protect and preserve our way of life. And whereas the city of Weston Lakes has within their midst many who have served and experienced the horrors of war, it is only fitting that we recognize them for their service and remember that when they were needed by the nation, they were there to answer the call. Now, therefore, I, Bob Wall, Mayor of the City of Western Lakes, Texas, proclaim that this Memorial Day, May 30th, 2022, be specifically celebrated in this, the city of Fulcher, to honor, remember, and recognize the sacrifices of the fallen members of the armed services of the United States, to and to particularly honor and recognize those who have served from the city of Western Lakes and who have given the ultimate sacrifice on the field of conflict in full measure of their devotion to this nation. Signed this 30th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2022, Bob Wall, Mayor, City of Western Lakes. Thank you to those Western Lakes residents that joined me in this proclamation. Thank you, Bob. That was great. Uh, and in recognition, just before I bring up our commissioner, I, I was remiss. If there are any Gold Star families in our audience, we'd love for to recognize you if there is, if you would mind rising. But those that know Gold Star families know what they are. They are in our hearts for sure, absolutely, on this day. And now our commissioner, uh, Commissioner Vince Morales, Precinct 1, come up and have a few remarks to share with us. Glad to have you today, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I'm grateful to have the privilege to be able to be with you all this morning as we honor all of those that made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. Freedom for us to be able to gather together as we are right now. God bless them all. God bless the United States of America. God bless the great state of Texas. And God bless the county, Fort Bend, that we call home. Blessings to all of you, and thank you for all of you being here today. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I should have read the program a little bit. Thank you, Vincent, very much. As reading the program, I'm supposed to recognize the elected officials now. But I, um, and our honored guest, but hey, you know, I just get so excited, I just go right into it because I like to see everybody here. So we'll just go with it and everything. But uh, uh, we have a wonderful speaker with us today. I, I've got to tell you, uh, I'm meeting uh, Sergeant First Class James Goolsby Sr. Uh, he's a fine gentleman, and uh, we're so honored that he is uh, here today to share his thoughts with us. And uh, 
Sergeant First Class uh, James, is, he took command of the Katy Army Recruiting Station in Katy, Texas on March 10th of 2022. He was born in Macon, Georgia, and he's a native of Juliet, Georgia, and he enlisted in the United States Army as a culinary specialist in 2007. Probably has some good recipes to share, I would think. <laughs> His assignments include Joint Base Little Creek, Virginia, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Hunter Army Airfield, Georgia, Kansas City Recruiting Battalion, and Atlanta Recruiting Battalion. This is impressive. His military awards include the Meritorious Service Medal, two Army Commendation Medals, nine Army Achievement Medals, three Good Conduct Medals, the Global War on Terrorism Medal, and the Gold Recruiting Badge of Excellence. He is married to, is it Lally or Lolly? Lolly. Lolly Goolsby of Nacogdoches, Texas. See, if yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, Axum, you Aggies out there, I know y'all got a way to say whoop, but us, us lumberjacks have to do something. But anyway, she's from Nacogdoches, Texas, and, she, and they have four children. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round warm welcome to Sergeant First Class James Goolsby Sr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Y'all are going to make me blush, and it's going to be hard to see, so please don't do that. <laughs> Thank you to all our elected officials for being here today, and to everyone in here. Hopefully, I do not keep you long, and hopefully, I don't tear up. It's an honor to be here today and speak a few words on behalf of so many that cannot be here with us today. As many of you know, Memorial Day is observed on the last Monday in May. However, for many families, friends, loved ones of the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice, Memorial Day is every day. It is the empty seat at the dinner table, the absence of their voice and the touch of their hands that reminds that their son, daughter, father, mother, sisters, brothers or friends will never be coming home again. Each of these individuals joined the military for different reasons. Regardless of their reasons, they all understood that service meant sacrifice. Their sacrifice ripples through every star and stripe of our flag as their sacrifice was woven into the cloth of our nation. Their sacrifices carry on the ideals of our nation that include equality, rights, liberty, opportunity, and democracy. Since World War I, this nation has lost more than 600,000 men and women in the defense of our freedom and protection of our nation. As I speak for them today, it is important to note that not everyone has made it home. We honor them through tributes such as the missing man table that allows us to reflect on those who are still missing in action to this day. As a young boy growing up in the Bible Belt of the South, I'll always remember one scripture, St. John chapter 5, verse 13. It says, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. But what if that man or woman lays down their life for a nation? I remember the first time I personally encountered the disbelief of a lost soldier. September 29th, 2011, as my battalion deployed an advanced party to the Gonzai province of Afghanistan. There they encountered an improvised explosive device that took the lives of three young soldiers, two of them whom I saw days earlier prior to departure. Gutowski, Drake, and Livowich lost their lives clearing a road so that others could travel safely. A few years later, on August 25th, 2016, I learned that a great friend of mine would not be coming home to his family anymore. Staff Sergeant Avonye Chisholm, 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, was gone. I remember receiving the news and attempting to comprehend the outcome. I recalled a speech that we would listen to before going out on training rotations or when we were training young men and women who just arrived to the unit and we wanted to remind them how much America meant to us. 
That speech included a portion of President Ronald Reagan's Memorial Day speech in 1982. And I pray that it touches you the way it does for many of us. President Reagan spoke these words. In America, cities, and towns today, flags will be placed on graves in the cemeteries. Public officials will speak of their sacrifice and the valor of those whose memory we honor. I have no illusions about what little I can add now to the silent testimony of those who gave their lives willingly for their country. Words are even more feeble on this Memorial Day, for the sight before us is that of a strong and good nation that stands in silence and remember those who were loved and who in return loved their countrymen enough to die for them. Yet we must try to honor them, not for their sakes alone, but for our own. And if words cannot repay the debt we owe these men, surely with our actions, we must strive to keep faith with them and with a vision that led them to battle and a final sacrifice. Our first obligation to them and ourselves is plain enough. The United States and freedom for which it stands, the freedom of which they died must endure and prosper. Their lives remind us that freedom is not brought cheaply and it has a cost. It imposes a burden, and just as they, when we commemorate, were willingly to sacrifice, so too must we, in a less final, less heroic way, be willing to give ourselves. Each died for a cause he considered more important than his own life. They didn't volunteer to die. They volunteered to defend values for which men have always been willing to die if need be. The values which make up what we call civilization and how they must have wished in all the ugliness that war brings that no other generation of young men to follow would have to undergo the same experience. As we honor their memory today, let us pledge that their lives, their sacrifice, and their valor shall be justified and remembered for as long as God gives life to this nation. And let us also pledge to do our utmost to carry out what must have been their wish that no other generation of young men will ever have to share their experience and repeat their sacrifice. Earlier today, with the music that we have heard and that of our national anthem, I can't claim to know the words of the national anthems of the world, but I do know of any other by ends with the question and the challenge as our does. Does that flag still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave? May God bless this great state of Texas, this great city, and this place we call home, known as America. Thank you. That was very inspiring. I, I, um, I'm glad you ended with that, Sergeant. It, it, um, most people didn't realize, and not till very long ago, it's a pretty good trivia question, Mayor Wall, is that this, the Star Spangled Banner, our national anthem, does end with a question. And it is a question mark when he wrote that. Uh, and, and so try to look that up, and sometimes when you sing the national anthem, ladies, perhaps again, you might think about, and the home of the brave? Is it the home of the brave? I believe it truly is, especially by look, witnessing all these folks here, these young men and women here to be here. I, we're so thankful that you're here to see this and participate in this with us today. And now, another musical presentation by the world-renowned Katie Vocal Express. Ladies.
beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide and far. Thank you so much, ladies. That was wonderful. Um, and now we're, we will, uh, once, before we retire the colors, I'll remind everybody after our benediction, we're going to adjourn outside for the floating, folding ceremony of the flag. Uh, if you would not mind letting the uh, uh, guests here uh, proceed outside first, along with our mayors, and then everyone can follow directly after that, if you don't mind. So as the uh, Troop 106 and Troop 941 prepare to Retire the colors, please, gentlemen. And uh, while they're preparing, you'll be we are recording this, and this will be available on uh, FacebookFulshire.com, right? And it's on the Chamber website. And it's on the Chamber website, Facebook as well. Uh, and so if you guys would like to see this again or share it with your friends around the world, We'd love for you to do that. And I want to thank Mr. Daniel McJunkin for his time and talent today. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Once again, Troop 106, Troop 941, please retire the colors. Troop 106 and 941, thank you so much for your participation today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with our benediction, I'd like to invite to the microphone Colonel Retired United States Army Reserve Retired Colonel Ronald V. Duncan. Would you join me in prayer? Eternal God and Creator of all, the psalmist has declared that before the world was, you were. We acknowledge today your creation has faltered from your grand design many times, resulting in harm and devastation to humanity. Today we have honored those who have given the supreme sacrifice in defense of what is right and true. Even though some of our decisions have been wrong, our motives have been for justice and righteousness. As we remember this day, the thousands of our brave men and women, may this inspire and spur us to live lives of integrity and justice. May each day we strive to add value to everyone we meet and serve those with the deepest hurts and heartaches. May we seek your wisdom through the Holy Scriptures and the Holy Spirit to aid us in our life journey. Now to him who is able to do more than we can imagine or think, to him be glory 
We pray in all the names humanity has used to call you God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Colonel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, mayors, if you please retire to outside as we will uh, play taps and then uh, recite the uh, words of the flag folding ceremony. And we'll see everybody, please, outside if you'd like to join us. You may at that time. Thank you.